be reasonable. We've got turn two, Sensei, turn three, Runier. That'll be very large. Yeah, I want to just make sure I win two to three matches a day. Just like progressively keep adding adding wins to my ladder record. That's the best way to do it. You don't want to try and like cram the entire ladder in at the end of the season to make top 64. If you do it slowly throughout the course of the, the season, it's much, you're much better off. <laughs> Howdy, his bulletproof holiness. All right, so this is a 3-4 that can't attack or block unless they control four or more dwarfs and or robots. I'm doing all right, Waffle. And double card is usually going to be pretty good against the dwarf deck. We'll see, though. He's got two of these, and that's going to allow him uh, just attack for three on turn two. That's pretty good. Thankfully, we are on we are on the play, so that means I'm going to be able to make a giant rune or hierophant here to start blocking with next turn. So our next turn is probably going to be... So I'm not really sure what our next turn is going to be. It's going to depend on what my opponent has going on. We can make this much larger. We're probably going to want to get this to a point where it can just, like, two-shot my opponent. Gain a little bit of life with these Carnosaurs. So many robots. The question then becomes, do I want to block a 3-4 this turn with my 5-5 five five and run the risk of them having a burn in their hand? All right, well, that makes things easier for myself. They're just going to turn something into a warbot, right? Yeah, so they're going to make a 3-3 three three here. So they're probably just going to crack with everything then, right? No, they're not attacking. Well, that's really good for us. Um... The default gems of the Runiers are Sacrifice and Unblockable. I never... Against control decks, we switch to Speed and Anthem, but by default, they are... They are what we have right here. Uh, so... I think I want to just play Double Karn this turn and, like, get some... I'm losing... I'm missing out on a Battle Hopper here, but, like, I could just go, like, Karn, eat your 1-1, one, one, gain 2, go to 20... Karn, eat your 1-1, one, one, gain 4, go to 24, like make this a 7-7, seven, seven, which seems like super reasonable. Yeah, that's fine, you're going to have another thing. I'm going to eat this. So that's a 7-7. Seven, seven. So like I said, I think... Um, I want to just play a little bit of defense here until this can get a little bit larger. And they're, they're just conceding. Okay. Uh, and this matchup gets infinitely better for us post-board because we get to bring in this full set of extinctions here, which is just not, not fun times or happy places for my opponent. Um... Pretty sure I want to leave the defaults on all of my, my gems for this matchup. Um, do I want to trim Howling Brave when I'm bringing in Extinction? This matchup's kind of quick, but it's probably still fine to cut these. Maybe trim a Vampire King because it's kind of slow. I can see actually just, like, cutting both these VKs and, like, leaving in one of these. Like, this is kind of a non-bow, but, like, their deck's also fast enough that, like, spending a Howling Brave to ramp into Extinction probably isn't the worst thing in the world. We'll just board into our Howling Brave Extinction combo deck post-board. Sand doesn't do a lot. I feel like our average 
Our average six is better than this, especially when we have three extinctions in our hand po deck post board. Yeah, the sand sand's much better. Cottontail into Underworld Crusader. Just like not having a strong play till turn four, if, if unless that strong play is extinction, probably isn't good enough in a matchup like this. And honestly, turn four extinction on the draw probably isn't going to cut it. Um I don't think I'm gonna play this out on one here. I think I'd rather just like guaranteed have this on two and this on three. I'm going to grab Wild here with my first resource, because if we hit a Carnosaur, I'm probably playing that on two. So, Gearsmith here lets my opponent look at the top three cards of their deck. They get to put an artifact from among them into their hand, and that artifact gets minus one cost. Eagle Claw Orb, this... Summon two dreadlings. All right, they have another charge bot. So yeah, Sands hitting it with Verdict of the Ancient Kings. Their deck is just super soft to extinction. They just like go wide and then don't have any follow up after it. Really, Carnosaur, rats. Very unlucky. Carnosaur would have been great here because would have eaten one of their guys and provided a two two blocker. Now we're gonna have to play this one one out and it'll trade with one of their idiots. But all right, casual draw infinite. I think Yodel and McBombus are still better. The Dwarf deck never really impresses me. I feel like it really doesn't get free wins. Yeah, so if we would have had a Karn here, it would have been super off. Ooh, the old summon Dreadlings to make my Petrobot cheaper. That's cute. Uh, I think I'd rather kill the Gearsmith. Yeah, I'd rather kill the Gearsmith here. And then I'm taking four. And then we don't even really care about this 3-5 because, like... This has reach, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a battle hopper with this. We have extra thresholds here in our hands, so we drew another wild shard, and I'd like a potential extra blocker just in case we need it. It also like can put more scrounge fodder in the crypt for later. Ten out of ten blocking here, unless they attack with this as well. This is like a free block. Our opponent could have burn here, but if they burn this, we're like drawing two cards. So, like, let's find an extinction. Even if we don't find extinction, we have a hero fall for this, which is fine. Man, that's a little bit bad beats. Um, start on this. Hit my champ power. Yeah, that seems okay. Might have to discard here, but I got plenty of shards to bend, so... Uh, Subtle Striker, and then am I playing Lackey? Yeah, I want to play the Lackey out. If they want to attack with things on the ground, I'm happy to chump and get a get a draw out of it. You have to be a little bit careful with our life total in this matchup because they often play Lasgar's Vengeance. If we miss on Extinction again, we're going to Hero Fall this next turn. I can't just sit here and take hits from it. Especially when uh, this is going to flip into a two-power flyer as well. Yazu can. Yes, yes, he can indeed. Um, hit on Cottontail here. We're probably going to have to discard. Oh, yep. Man, Cottontail's been real good this game. I'm going to go ahead and put a stop during my opponent's ready step. And the reason why I'm doing this is my opponent's deck often plays Verdict of the Ancient Kings, especially post-reserves. And I'd much rather they use their two resources for their verdict on this turn cycle rather than doing it on my turn and then getting their resources back on their next turn. Sure. So just in case that last card in their hand was Verdict of the Ancient Kings, I stopped on their ready step to get optimal resources out of that. So this, whenever you play an artifact, you get a dreadline, and there's five or more artifacts in your crypt. This gets plus one, plus one. So he's got... Three artifact Arunis in there right now. Let's see if he suicides these in to try and fill it up. He does not. All right. Um, yep. Yeah. Let's make another one one oh one here and then play this Yazoo hand out. We have uh, six five cards in our hand, but they are all pretty bad, unfortunately. In our crypt, however, we have all right. Just not beating the Yazoo can. All right. Sign me up. This is my 3-5 that gains life and brings troops back. Is that okay? <clears throat> I 
Yeah, that sounds actually pretty good. Uh, we have to decide whether or not we're playing... Uh, I'm going to lead on this Wild Shard, actually, here, because if my opponent has Howling Brave on 1, I 10 out of 10 want to Carnet on 2. And if they don't have Howling Brave on 1, I can just go Blood Shard, play these 2 on 2. Yeah! Make the percentage play, get rewarded for it. That always feels good. So we don't have second blood, but there's plenty of blood in the deck, and we've got other stuff to do, even if we don't hit it right away. Might Singer's kind of annoying. Hopefully we have two draws to find a blood so we can hero fall this. That feels a little bit bad. Because we chose to make a wild on our dual shard there and then drew another wild. So, wish that was one sooner, but it is what it is. If you draw some cards with this, you draw some cards with this. Ideally, we just need to get rid of this Might Singer before it turns into a 7-7. Seven seven, which could be as early as next turn. Please don't have another Howling Brave. God bless. Sorry. All right. Well, let's play this and then pound my champion power here. Uh, I guess I'll attack with both of these first, just in case he kills one somehow. Yeah, I think with the hero fall at hand, I like I like being able to do do what I did. I think my I think my line is fine. Like, we're going to have to get, like, we might get a little unfortunate and, like, not hit blood for these on time, but, like, sometimes you're going to get a little unfortunate. Like, we have a kill blade to keep this at bay. Even if they attack, if they attack in and kill this at some point, like, we'll get to draw two cards, which will likely give us the threshold to hero fall this. They drew some cards, but that is what it is. Usually we're beating them in card advantage anyways. Wow, they don't have another resource here. That's great for us. Oh, well, we're playing this, and then let's play the. Um, I'm gonna attack first and not let them know that their Might Singer's dying before they choose whether or not they're gonna block with this. Let's get rid of this now, so they don't have a chance to draw a card if they had a Wild Threshold next turn. Okay, they hit their fifth resource, but it was a Chlorophyllia, so that means we can't get croc this turn at least, which feels good. And then next turn we can hold up this other hero fall for a croc. I'm assuming they have croc, and that's why they're not taking this trade. I wonder if they can afford to take another hit for four here. And didn't think they could. Hopefully we hit like a shard and a three drop. Um, just gonna play Cottontail Explorer out here. Hopefully we hit a non-slow shard and then we can play the Howling Brave. Look at that. Look at that. Not playing the Carnosaur out for no value. Also, again, want to hold up Hero Fall for potential Croc. This is the first turn they've had five resources. And Hero Hero Falling the Crocs out of this deck feels so amazing because like Croc and Karn are basically their only removal, and Crocs their only quality removal, essentially. So Dream Weaver Ancient, do you say? I just can't power it. Alright, I'm going to take the opportunity to hero fall these out. This also makes their deck less scary. I'd rather, I'd rather this was a croc, but oh, god, every time you hero fall and a card leaves their hand, it just gets, just get the chills. It's just like, yeah, kill, kill your thing, discard a card, what's not to love? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and crack them for... Yeah, I'm just going to crack for the full five here. No reason to hold this back because we killed their speed troop. Um... I'm not going to play this out, because not only because it's not uh, for any value, but also because it's just playing it out doesn't put lethal on the table, so I'd much rather much rather hold it until it is, is a little bit useful. Their Might Seekers are gone, but like they could get a Runer Hierophant and not be able to pump it right away, possibly, or something like that, or like two of these cards could add up into something. Alright, that's pretty good. Breed Palm Emancipator is kind of an interesting card. You don't really just see that in Grandfather Elk. I'm playing this out, make a no one. 
champ power. Ah, uh, the old main deck Gemborn Prowler. Not useful now, but could be useful at some point. Yeah, I'm just going to ship the turn here. His cards gummed up the board pretty successfully, so we're looking for one of our cards that let us play over the top. Man, my kingdom for a second hero fall there. Multiple, multiple green paws is pretty huge. Um, huh. I think I'm just going to take my hit for six here. Let's hope to, let's hope to draw something, I guess. That definitely qualifies. Let's kill this 0-1, which lets us draw a card. Oh, I probably should have blocked with that 0-1 last turn. Rewarded for bad play. Play this out. So they're now dead on board. Yeah, I should have blocked with the Lackey. I wasn't thinking about what Lackey was doing there. And now I'm going to play this Carnosaur out. And we're just not going to do anything with it. The reason why I'm playing this Carnosaur out here is because I want to put both of these Rainier Hierophants out of Croc range. So Croc's only hit for five, so... Let's go ahead and pass here now. Where when you when you're lucky, your mistakes don't matter. If you have to choose between lucky and good, always pick lucky. Unfortunately, good is the only one we can control. Okay, you have an eight eight. 8-8 eight, eight blocks these, so that is relevant. Um, so if I draw any any troop here, they're dead, because that'll make this a 9-9. Nine, nine. Another Runer Hierophant will do. That'll do, pig. That'll do, donkey. That'll do. You know I have this this Gemborn Prowler. Wasky Wabbits. This will become a 9-9, nine, nine, which then this, none of their troops can block. I guess if they have a Wild Growth, they can block this. Oh, you know what? I should have attacked with this, too. And that plays around wild growth. Yeah, so I should have attacked with that 80 as well. Uh, Alright, post-board. Again, I think uh, this matchup's pretty good for us. Um, Rock cast and extinctions come in. Howling Brave. And usually I trim a Karn. Or an as I can take or leave. I think the gem board prowler is actually fine in this matchup. I'm gonna do this. I could actually trim an underworld troop if I wanted. I haven't done that yet. Like put this Karn back in. Like Subtle Striker is a little medium. Let's do that and put this Karn back in. Let's give this a go. I am wearing a Mrs. Claus the Holiday Musical show t-shirt. During undergrad, I worked for a children's theater company, um, running their 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 technical aspect and I was the stage manager for the last year that I was I worked for them. I had a good time with that. Easy mulligan here. Sorry, I just wanted to do a message. Uh, this hand is not going to be good against a turn one brave, but it's reasonable otherwise, so we're going to keep it. No brave. All right. It's, uh, we drew a blood shard there. It's actually a decent draw because I mean, we get to start on wild with this, so if we draw a Carnosaur, we can Karn a turn two might singer. Okay, so the Smite Singer's going to get a chance to draw a card, unless we draw a Carnosaur. Okay, we'll play Blood out here so that we can Hero Fall next turn. Uh, hopefully they don't have a second Might Singer like they did last game. 
ideally what we're looking to dodge here. Good unconditional counter. No idea. Just a card's great. That's fine. Beat me down with a 4-4. Hero fall the crap out of this. Huh. And they boarded one out. That's smart. Trimming your four ofs against uh, the hero fall deck is is definitely definitely ideal. The old turn. Turn three, Holly Brave. Hashtag right on time. I um, think we're just going to shard and then champ power before we do anything here. I'm not quite sure what I want to do. If we had like a Carnosaur, I'll probably Karn this Brave. Hit a shard. Alright, so what do I want to do here with my life? Wish I had troops in my crypt so I could like paw and not feel bad about it. I think I'm just supposed to pass the turn here. I'm going to kill this now. I'm going to get a little bit punished if they have uh, they have green paw to play here. But I wanted to wait. I didn't do that on my turn because I wanted to wait in case they had a... Uh, they had a, what's it called? A... Uh, the Ancient card. Uh, yeah, let's play Cotton Tail, see what we find. Play a lackey, and then that put one, two more troops in my crypt. So, paw is, paw is live. So we're a little flooded. Opponent's a little screwed. Fl screw usually beats flood, so we'll see how that goes. Dreamweaver, okay, yep, that's kind of scary, so hopefully they get a bad, a bad 7 here, so, maybe I'm supposed to double block and give them a 5, yeah, I'm gonna double block and give them a 5, giving them a 6 is worse than giving them a 7, but giving them a rand, god damn it, <laughs> seriously, I'm just going to rock cast this now so they don't have a fifth resource. They're more likely to have a Dreamweaver Ancient than they are to have a, a Gargolith, though. So I'd much rather play around the Dreamweaver Ancient than the Gargolith. Another green paw. All right, we need one of those three extinctions. Pretty bad. Uh, if we hit, um, if we hit this paw of Yazu can back out of the crypt here, that would also be decent. Though we got a champion activation here. Let's go ahead and start with this. Hit a rock cast. That really doesn't do anything. Um, I'm gonna play this Runer Hierophant and eat my Underworld Crusader here. Okay, do I want to play into a croc? I guess it doesn't really play into a croc because they can eat the Vampire King, but like they don't kill the Runier Hierophant.
So I guess this lets them attack in with everything. See, I'm just, I'm dead. I was dead either way there, right? I have to play that even, even with the blocks. I'm pretty sure I'm dead there. Hmm. Yeah, I just needed to see an extinction that came in 20 cards. I saw like 15 cards, I guess. As Extinction has Underworld Crusader, a little slow, but Extinction on Force probably makes it fine. Uh, again, going to lead on Wild on this, because if we draw Karn, we might want to play it on two. like to draw two drop here just like any two drop uh, yes. I guess that doesn't really work work as requested but that's fine should be more specific uh, I was thinking I forgot I had rock cast in post board I wonder if they're not playing it's very possible they're just, like, not playing um, Runeer Hierophant. We haven't seen them yet. They have some acorns in their deck just for the life gain. That's cute. Why do you need a... I guess you technically need five wild for your, your Might Singers. Another just a car, sure. I'm like snapping off this trade, I'm pretty sure. Make a second blood here. Um Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and pass the turn here. It summons a copy of itself, yeah. So every time it becomes Valorous, you just, you get another one. That seems really sweet. Alright, so I'm gonna block this here. Am I gonna burn this rock cast? Yeah, I feel like I am. I feel like I can get more value out of this extinction. That's, that's a card that's pushed for Constructed. I'm going to hero fall this. I keep having multiple of them and it's really annoying. I start on a champ power. Yeah, let's start on a champ power. I'd love to get a shard. Sure. Um, you know what? Actually, let's just do this into, into Runeer Hierophant now. This likely forces my opponent to go wider here and draw shard, draw shard. Rats. And then we can extinction to clean up. Oh, huh, I didn't think about that. You have Balthazar? That's unfortunate. Balthazar was not on my radar here. I'm going to take it for 7 dying. Alright, block this. I cut my Uranaz. That might have been wrong. 
gonna Karn this Howling Brave next turn. Hopefully we hit a resource so we can hero fall this. Still nothing, huh? Yeah, I'm just gonna do this and kill the green paw. Just gonna wait for this rabbit to get larger. If he has shard croc karn here, that would be a little annoying, but not the end of the world. It lets him clear my board out and then hit us for two, putting us to eight. This is gonna gain me a little bit of life at least. Would really love to be able to play this VK with hero fall protection. It's a good target for Carnosaur. Oh, energy cards on one of their two. Clobberiest of all the dons. Snap blocking things here, so. Shard. God bless. All right, so let's go ahead and make an 0-1 here. And then, huh. Am I just going to, like, I have to decide whether or not I'm extinctioning this game. I feel like I'm not. Yeah, I think I'm just going to Runier sack this battle hopper. And then we're going to set up probably just, like, a one-turn kill your stuff. Unless they have, like, a Gargolith, we're probably not going to have to extinction this game. Which they could have a Gargolith here. Alright, so this is 15, so not too far off of just, like, one-shotting them with rabbits. We also might set it up where, like, we hit them once with this rabbit, and then, like, both of them are lethal the following turn. The Runier Hierophant, it's funny, like, you think that this matchup is good because, like, we have a lot of quality removal and sweepers post-board, but the reason why the wild matchup is so strong for this deck is because we have these Runier Hierophants that just grow out of control so quickly, and then they just can't block them. Okay, you have an 8-8, eight, eight, sure, of a 9-9. Nine, nine. Well, how many troops are in here? Just two, that's sad. Um... I'm just going to play this VK out. Maybe I'm supposed to hold Hero Fall there because he has a champ power waiting. If he doesn't have a champ power charge, maybe I'm supposed to... Because like, he can make this an 11-11. Yeah, I'm probably supposed to hold Hero Falls there. really wish we would have hit a 6-3 source so we could like, have two of these up. Stomp, stomp, roar. So this is going to eat these two and put me to 15. Yep. So, VK forces the croc, which is kind of nice, I guess. If he doesn't use this this turn, we should be in a good spot. Yeah, sweet. So, not pushing that through, that's good for us. Another extinction. Um, yeah, at this point, we can do this, and then... I think I'm actually going to leave this other paw in here rather than, take the v rather than the VK, because this paw destroys something when it comes back. So, let's go ahead and kill this. Then, like, I could get aggressive here and, like, hit them for 11, and then they're just dead next turn. That's probably correct, right? Like, what's the worst case that could happen? They could, like, go double Dreamweaver Ancient. If they go, like, double Dreamweaver Ancient and power up one of them, I block that one, block one of these, and then take 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I think, worst case scenario, we're taking 11 next turn. I also feel like I just have, like, an extreme upper hand in this game if I just pass, so, yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna pass. I feel like there's a small chance I lose this game if I, 
if I attack with the level one. Like I'm, I'm almost guaranteed to win the game next turn. Like if I draw any troop, but I think, I think the conservative line is to just wait here. No, I'm not playing a Star City event until I play the, um, the modern open in Indianapolis next month. I'm playing a Pokemon tournament in Chicago this weekend. Oh, that was Dream Weaver Ancient. Yeah, another Runier Hierophant, you say? Am I supposed to Hero Fall? That's the name I'm supposed to pass the turn here. Unless like continue the staring contest with our giant troops. Eh, maybe we're supposed to just kill this now so they can't play another one. A good deck for modern would be this weekend. Whatever you're comfortable with. The for, the honestly, the the bannings in modern aren't going to change the format, like almost at all. The only difference they make now is you could probably beat Dredge only seeing one hate card, whereas before, like you had to draw two hate cards post board. I'm just gonna go ahead and hero fall this. I have this rot cast to kill basically anything here if they champ power it. So let's just get the Dream Weavers out of his deck. I kind of like holding this in my back pocket for in case they draw Gargolith, that way I can Extinction and not feel bad about it. Ha! That, that probably means I need to Extinction. So they, they empowered that, which makes four Shroom Pins, and they all get plus two, plus two. Uh, yeah, that's, that's fine. Rock cast that, block a bunch of their nerds here. Pretty sure we're just extinctioning next turn. Like we've got a backup extinction past this one. Take three here, yeah. So, I'm gonna attack with both of these and then sweep the board, I think. Do I wanna play this kill blade? If I play the kill blade, I get two more points of damage in, and then he can't block this. Alternatively, I could just play a post combat, a post extinction though. Yeah, I don't think getting in nine extra points of damage is worth it. Nine, ten, eleven, technically. Uh, they don't do the Pokemon tournament I'm playing in is like basically the equivalent of an invitational qualifier. So like, it's just a small store room. It's probably have, like thirty or forty people at it. So, we're in the driver's seat now, but we're also due to draw some shards, like we haven't drawn any yet. Yeah, I like, I like Hex a lot. The game, the game has, has a pretty, pretty good design team behind it, and I enjoy, I've enjoyed almost all of their constructed formats so far. The layout of their tournament plays similar. Uh kind of. They their their prize their prize payouts scale better, which is nice. Um they could have lullabies in their deck, so this rabbit would be lethal in three turns if they don't have one of those. They could also just be holding resources at this point. And I've stripped their Dreamweaver Ancients out of their hand, which is their scariest thing they could draw at this point. And we have a hero fall for whatever they could draw after that. They have so Pokemon, from what I understand, has regional tournaments which are large cash tournaments that are open attendance. And then their regionals and their thing I'm playing this weekend, their store event, a league cup, all these things earn you points on their circuit. And if you earn enough points during one of their years, which is June to June, you can qualify for their world's tournament, which has a very reasonable cash payout.
Pokemon also has a great online digital client. If you haven't caught me streaming that before, you should definitely check out the archives on YouTube. We're not going to play any today. I'm just playing some hex ladder matches this morning. But uh, the the Pokemon digital client is the reason I really started trying the game, and it's it's very good. This hand's great. Hopefully, uh, well, I guess this hand's actually not good against a Runier Hierophant. But we're on the play, so we can kill a turn one. We can kill a turn one Brave, which is nice. And hopefully they have a Brave on one, so we can kill it with this on two, and then, like, Runier on three and sack this would be ideal. Yeah, they always have the Brave. Tough to get cards. It's not complicated once you understand how it works. The 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 system for acquiring cards in their digital clients a little bit convoluted, but it does at least have a cash in cash out option. Basically, it's against their TOS to buy and sell cards for cash directly. But what you could do is you can buy buy bo tradable booster pack codes for cash, and there's places that trade cards for booster pack codes. That's basically how it works. And then turn three Runier Hierophant on the play is just like, again, the, you need to kill the wild decks and like this just gets out of control for them generally and they're not going to be able to have a quality answer to it. Our best draw next turn would be uh, any one drop troop or a um, a one drop troop or a uh, monster guy lily pad so we can make a battle hopper and get this other one going as well. Snapping off this block because it's free. All right, play this out, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit my champ power here in case we had a one drop. Had a resource. Um, do I want to play this out? Holding this is better if they have, like, a Might Singer. And, like, next turn I could always go. I guess Karn blocks one of these these idiots, though. Yeah, I'm just going to play this out for just a 2-2 two -two for 2. Uh, I don't remember the site offhand that does the pack codes for cards. There's a few different sites online that um, that sell pack codes. I mean, I'll find a link for the... Oh, that's annoying, because now they're going to kill my Karn, and then I can't sack it to this. Yeah, that's that's tough. And now they're going to gain four life, too. So now I really want to draw one or a two drop, so that way I can have something to sack to this. We're going to hit for six here, so I probably actually need to leave this on defense now, unless I can get this down. Any one or two drop, any one or two drop, any one or two drop. Another shard. All right, well, we're going to pass the turn here. That's really unfortunate. I guess I could, if I would have waited on the Karn, I could have played around a Karn onto them. I also get one less point of damage that way, but that's probably still reasonable. Uh, easy block. Gemborn Prowler, uh, am I just going to play this out to play it out? I feel like I might. Hey, Jake, you want to come sit by Dad? Ah, Dad loves you. You're my favorite oldest kid. Um, huh. You want some goldfish crackers? They have Runier Hierophants of their own. Yeah, I'm just gonna pass the turn here. If I hit a if I hit a blood next turn, I can like play this Urn as out, and if I don't hit a blood, then I'm drawing a troop. Mm 
Oberon's eulogy is kind of terrifying. How big are these things now? Seven sevens. Well, that's that's definitely how I could lose this game. And that's a reason to have wanted to start applying pressure sooner. So let's block here. Need to draw a paw or a blood here. All right. Oh, there's a blood. So we get to Uranaz and bring back. Uh, I think I'm actually. Oh wait. If I earn as, I can bring back their giant dreadling. Right. That's more gold fish. I could, I could just bring back their giant dreadling. I could also like Carnosaur and like Carn their Carn. I also just like get clobbered on. Nah, I should probably just get the giant dreadling, right? This line. Only loses to a second Dread Harvest. I think I lose to a second Dread Harvest here. I don't know. We'll see. Kill me. Oh. Oh, it loses. Oh, crap. Fuck, I forgot about that. I, al I always do that. Oh, good. We drew a paw. God bless. Um... I always, I always forget that it makes their stupid, their crocs bigger, too, to kill my Runeer Hierophant. So, let's do this. We'll paw this Oberyn's eulogy. So, paw was a great draw there. Yeah, professional. They thankfully did not have a resource to kill us last turn after the croc. Um... Champ power and go ahead and hit this to try and bring back my big rune here. Carnosaur, sure. Let's go ahead and play this. I'm gonna sack. There might have been merit, honestly, to sacking the paw before I champ powered there, but hitting the large rune here seemed like having a higher chance that the large rune here seemed like better upside. Might singer, sure. I'm glad you're eating goldfish, kid. It's been a while since you've liked these. Cluckadon's actually very good here because it gives them the ability to not be dead to not be dead to this next turn. Let's go ahead and play this Karn and eat their Might Singer here. You can play out this Underworld Crusader. Am I supposed to attack here? I feel like I am. I'm dead to Eulogy plus Shard. This way they're dead next turn, though. So, yeah, let's just do this. Eulogy into Shard kills us here. Eulogy into Howling Brave kills us here. That's not a Eulogy. All of the We're Dead stories start with Eulogy there. All right, and they are dead. Just playing out their last cards before they're due. Um, so this matchup's harder for us than Grandfather Elk because they have Eulogy, which is good against us. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring in Rockcast and Extinction, I think, still, and maybe Inquisition in this in this matchup. Yeah, I'm going to bring in the Inquisitions. Carnosaur is much worse in this matchup than it is against Grandfather Elk. I'm also going to trim the Vampire Kings. Like, they're good at pressuring them, but they often expose us to Croc. Cut a couple Karns. I can cut a... Troop. I'm gonna cut Subtle Striker, I think. I don't hate the idea of having some access to some Steel Intel in this matchup. Leaving a couple cards in is okay. Let's give let's give this a go. Up a game, heading into game th game two here.
I would just like to say good morning, afternoon, and good night to everyone, wherever you're at in the world. Thanks for choosing to spend part of your Friday here with us. My name is Jeff Hogan. I'm a professional TCG player, and here on this channel, we play all sorts of card games, Hex, Magic, Pokemon. If you're enjoying the content, you're to the stream, I'd encourage you to show a little bit of support by using the follow button there that's on screen. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're really enjoying the content, you want to show a little bit of extra support, the subscribe function there is the absolute best way you can support the stream. It supports myself financially as well as the Twitch infrastructure that we all use and enjoy most days. Um, if you're looking for more content for myself, you can check out my YouTube archive, which is linked in the stream below. I had all of archives of my past matches broken up there by game, by deck, by matchup. Um, on the top of the stream there, another way you can support the stream is that Hex Primal discount code. It gets you a discount on any Hex cards you buy from Hex Primal, as well as gives a little bit of kickback to me here on the stream for having their ad up there. All right, this hand's a little slow on the draw, but maybe we can lean on Extinction. We'll see. Again, hands like this are slow against Hollowing Brave, but against a non-Hollowing Brave draw, this hand's excellent. Alright, there's the Brave. There's another Extinction, alright. Again, leading on wild in case we hit Karn. Although we only have two Karns, and two, we also have two Rock Casts in our deck right now, so like, kind of split 50-50 on which one we could hit here. Big rabbit. Well, there's the there's the Carnosaur I talked about potentially playing. So let's play this out and eat the Howling Brave. And again, this this is a great example of why Carnosaur is not very good in this matchup. While it's fine in the Elk matchup, if my opponent was playing Grandfather Elk, we would have been able to Carn the Runier Hierophant here because they were on Shoku and able to crank this rabbit up to a four three right away. We were not able to to Carn it away. Puck. Okay. That's interesting. Was that created? That's a good created card to hit. No blocks here. I want to be able to threaten a double block with Underworld Crusader plus Karn next turn. And they missed a resource here, so killing that Howling Brave was good. Hopefully this lets them vomit some cards into play here, so that way we can have some more value from this extinction. That being said, even if they only play like one thing or no things here, I'm probably still hammering this extinction this turn. Puck makes just three resources, so he's got one big thing in his hand. And playing out a second Runier Hierophant makes sense here. So, snap double blocking this Runier. So, two of the four cards in their hand are the created, the created cards, or one of the cards, I guess, because this Runier, he already played out the created card. All right, I'm going to do this, and then I'm just going to go ahead and slide this extinction on out here. I mean, they always have a croc, right? I guess you could also have a eulogy, right? Like this says, for each... No, it's for each troop. Okay. Third Rainier Hierophant. Kind of wish I would have burned the Hero Fall. I'm going to go ahead and hit my Chant Power to start here, so if we flip another troop over, I can get Paw. Okay. Uh, yep, I'm going to go ahead and Inquisition, see what's up over here. Gargolith and Balthazar now. They have a Scorn of Oberon as well. Huh. Mentor of Oakenge is actually another really good card to have created. What does this do? This is one one for each different threshold you have. Sure, that's pretty bad. Uh, so I'm going to screenshot this. I think I'm just going to take the Gargolith out of their hand here. I can keep the... Um, I can keep the Balthazar in check with removal. So, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and hero fall this dork and then pass the turn here. So when this dies, it transforms itself into a Ceremony of Okenj, which is a card that lets my opponent look at the top few cards of their deck and put a troop from them into their hand. 
Uh, so I've only got three troops in here. I'm just going to go ahead and play out this 01 and use it to chump block, I think, here. It gets me another troop in the crypt. I could play out a 4-3, but I don't really think that's worthwhile. I'd rather hold these to kill things. And I'd rather use them to kill, like, Oberon Geologies and stuff like that. Happy to jump block here. Save two life, draw a card. Alright, you play your one one out, Fred. So they have Scorn of Oberon, Balth, and then cards we don't know at this point. Does the third paw change my mind about just playing something out? I think it does. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. Your train show ended. I got you. I got you, kid. There you go. Don't don't stop the train show, folks. You're not gonna you're not gonna like what you see if you stop the train show. Would not like to activate this power. Let's just play a four three out here. And this could still be a little aggressive, especially since he has like three power worth of guys and like I can't attack in with it. But like it holds this at bay and like encourages him to take his board wider so this extinction can do something. Feels bad. Please play out another troop. So like this is getting bigger next turn, so I'm I'm probably obligated to extinction here, honestly. Oh, Inquisition's a good pickup. Yep, almost certainly gonna take this Balthazar away. And they chose not to play anything out into extinction, so that's pretty smart. Uh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna attack with this. To extinction or not to extinction. I've got one, two, three, four troops in here now. I just like do this and yeah, I'm just gonna do this. Because I can extinction and clear these away to have another paw activation here. I'm also pretty close to a champion activation as well, so. Ooh. There's the ceremony of Okenge that uh, the, what's it called, was transformed into the mentor. Stomp, stomp, roar, sure, these are dead. Alright, that's a good draw. Um, again, I'm going to hold on to my extinction, uh, mostly because like getting all the crocs out of their deck is pretty valuable. Go ahead and hit this. Alright, took another hero fall back to my hand. And again, not playing this paw out because um, Oberon Jewelry is one of their better cards at this point that I'd much rather be able to kill that on site. So my opponent's hand right now is two Scorns and two cards we don't know. Underworld Crusader is a phenomenal draw. It applies pressure to my opponent, and should they have another answer to it somehow, we get to draw cards. I'm a fan of drawing cards. Halloween train. Two scorns, Clobberdon. Yes, you're right. We do know the Clobberdon. I forgot to take an updated screenshot. Thank you, Tom. Yep, there's the eulogy. Yep, yeah, the 13-13, so 
The easiest way we lose this game is them running another Oberon's Eulogy off here. So, must block here, obviously. We get to go ahead and paw this. Hey, Dark Wonders. So, Scorn, Scorn, Clobberdon are the cards in their hand. Ooh, that's why they were holding the Clobberdon, because now it's going to be huge. Am I hero falling this? Yeah, I'm going to hero fall this. Gets troops out of their deck, too. Let's reduce their threat density a good bit. I have three troops in here, right? Yeah, more, more than three. Yes. Get rid of this, this, and that's actually kind of a tough call. Probably, eh. yeah, let's do that. Keep the proactive, the proactive cards in there. Okay, now we're definitely, definitely in the driver's seat here. The last two cards of Scorner, Oberon, and we have them dead in three. We're hitting them to fifteen, and then we have eight and eight. The paw was already scrounged, yeah, which like kind of makes me want to keep it, but I think I'd rather have Crusader and the other one in there. It's definitely close. They also don't have Crocs left in their deck, so they need like, Ober they need like Eulogy into Carnosaur here, and like, they're not really gonna have time for that. This means a random blocker is not gonna do it next turn unless it's bigger than two toughness. That gains them two life though, which uh, means it is going to be big enough because they went up to nine here, so. And Oberyn's... I'm going to play this out here. Kill your Balthazar. Uh, does Oberyn's Eulogy let them have lethal next turn, potentially? Yeah, so I'm going to attack with both of these, and then I'm going to play this Runer Hierophant out and not sacrifice anything, because it gives me three blockles, blockers and four lethal attackers, so I'm just not going to sack here. So they hit Carnosaur here. They go like Sh Oberon's Eulogy, Shard, Carnosaur. It just has nothing sweet. And like what I'm doing there where I'm talking through like iterations of cards they could possibly have. That's what you want to do when you're ahead in a game. You want to figure out, okay, what's the best way my opponent has to get back into this game that I'm winning? And how can I play my cards in a way that minimizes their ability to play to their best out? So your opponent's job is to maximize their ability to get back in the game. And your job is to minimize their ability to claw back in. So you want to be thinking about what possible cards they could have and how you can minimize the impact of those cards should they be fortunate enough to draw them.